What's up everyone? This is a video on topographic maps. Now you will be doing this video after you've already got some background knowledge on topographic maps. At this point, you should at least know these terms. So topographic maps, obviously contour lines, or you could just call them contours, uh, and contour interval. Now, if you're not quite sure on that one, we're gonna go into that in this video a little bit, just so you're clear. But for this video, we're focusing on how to draw a cross section. Now, the type of cross section we'll be drawing is an elevation profile. And the key word there is elevation, because with topographic maps and contours, we're talking about height above sea level. So this is what the map looks like from the side. Remember that we look at topographic maps from the top. We're looking down on them. So it's not always easy to tell what that map uh, or what the land actually looks like, particularly if you've got something like a mountain. So let's give you a really, really basic topographic map. And in this situation, we don't have really much to go by. We do have uh, an idea of the contour interval uh, because we've got two index numbers here, two contour index numbers that are 100 and 200 meters. So from there, we can work out that the numbers in between will be 120, 140, 160, 180, we've got 200 there, and then 220, 240, and even up to 260 on what looks like it would be heading towards a peak. Uh, and obviously 80, 60, 40, etc. But for a cross section, we want to work out the distance from one point to another. Usually in an assignment or a test, exam, etc., you'll be given two points. You may need to work them out for yourself occasionally, but let's just say in this situation, we're given point A up here and we're given point B down this area. So we're working out from here to here on the map what that looks like from the side. So what we need to do is to get a clean sheet of paper now, it's probably not recommended that you use your book for this because this is gonna be separated uh, and you'll need the book for later. So just a small sheet of paper um, about the size of a ruler, but it can't be a ruler. Uh, and you may even be able to find some of them in the classroom already cut up for you. Very important from this point that you put your name on it. You'll be able to work out why that is when you're in the classroom. And then we're going to plot in point A and point B and we're gonna label it as well. Now I've used arrows, you could just use lines or little dots, either's fine. Uh, but each one of these contour lines that touches this particular point on the paper, we are going to plot in. Again, I've used arrows, lines or dots would be fine. And we also want to put in their heights, which as I've already shown you, is easy enough to work out if you've got something like an index here, which you'll easily be able to find on the map work out the contour interval, the uh, gap, the interval between each of the contours, so what that difference is in height, and then this part you can plot in from there. From there we're going to take that piece of paper away. We're done with the map for now. But then we'll take that onto a clean sheet of paper, ideally in your book. Now, if you do have graph paper, that'll probably make this a lot easier. But even if you don't, you can just rule the lines along if you need them. Otherwise, you may not need them. In this case, I haven't bothered, but we'll be able to put in over on this y-axis the heights. And we know that it went down to about as low as 60 and it went up to 220 meters. Now, because this one is representing the elevation, we probably need to go a little bit higher than 220. We could even go to 260. And look, I probably should have gone a bit lower than 240, uh, sorry, than 60 as well, but we can work that one out from here. The X axis is representing distance. Now we're gonna get our little piece of paper that we've already drawn out. And each one of these we can plot. So we know this is 220 meters. We're gonna plot that dot in there. Uh, this one being 200, we'll plot that there. 120 here, 60, etc. cetera. Uh, and because the mountain had moved up and down, etc. 220, 200, and then back up to 220, down to 200 again, this is gonna move up and down a little bit. So when I put in all these dots, as I've just mentioned how to do, we've got a rough outline of our elevation profile. Mountain's not gonna look 
like this. You're not going to have straight drawing. It's not connected dots, although it is slightly. We need to draw something a little bit more like a mountain. We're assuming how this one will round out around there. And then now, that's what the mountain looks like from side on. So if we go back to our original map and we had points A and B, and we had a line drawn between them, we can now compare the two. This is what that looks like from on top. And from here, we've got that side on view of what looks like a double peak of the mountain. So there you go, that is how to do a cross section, specifically an elevation profile in a topographic map.